Hi, my name is Kain Son Munonye, and you are welcome to this process we are going to discuss today, Validate Scope. Validate Scope falls under the Project Scope Management Knowledge Area. Previously on, on Project Scope Management, I discussed CRACE WBS, and that was the last of the planning processes in the Scope Management Knowledge Area. In addition to that, we have plan scope management, collect requirements, define scope, create WBS. And now we are going to discuss validate scope. Validate scope falls under the monitoring and controlling process group. According to the PIMBO guide, Validate scope is a process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables. The key benefit of this process is that it brings objectivity to the acceptance process and increases the chance of final product service or result acceptance by validating each deliverable. So what does it mean? During scope validation, it has to do with acceptance of the deliverable by the customer. During validate scope, the customer examines the deliverables and either says it's okay or it's not okay. So let's now look at the inputs, the tools and techniques and the outputs of the validate scope process. As usual, we are going to go through all the inputs, outputs, and also the tools and techniques, and then we take some time to look at them in detail. Validate scope has five inputs. Project management plan, which is a collection of all the other subsidiary plans, including the baselines. Requirement documentation. Remember, the requirement documentation is the output of the collect requirement process. Requirement traceability matrix, also an output of the collect requirement process. Verified deliverables is an output of the controlled quality process under the project quality management knowledge area. We have not discussed quality management, but just know that verified deliverables is an output of the quality management process. Work performance data. What of the tools and techniques of validate scope? There are two of them. Inspection, group decision making techniques. Then the output will be accepted deliverables, change requests, work performance information, projects document updates. There is this, a clarification I would like to make about validate scope and control quality. They have some similarity, but take note of subtle difference between them. The verified deliverables obtained from control quality process are reviewed with the customer or sponsor to ensure that they are completely satisfactory and have received formal acceptance of the deliverables by the customer or sponsor. The validate scope process differs from the control quality process in that for validate scope we are concerned with acceptance of deliverables while control quality is primarily concerned with correctness of the deliverables and meeting the quality requirements specified for the deliverables. Control quality is generally performed before validate scope, although the two of them may be performed in parallel. Alright, let's now see if we can discuss some of these inputs. Of course, one of the inputs to validate scope is a scope management plan. The scope management plan defines how the scope will be managed, how the scope will be controlled and defined. Why do we need the requirement documentation for validate scope? The reason is because this documentation lists all the project, product and other type of requirements for the project and product along with the acceptance criteria. So for the product of the project to be accepted, 
there must be a criteria to be much to be measured against and this information is contained in the requirement documentation the requirement traceability matrix is necessary because it links requirements to their origin and tracks them throughout the project life cycle another input is verified deliverables the project team have verified the deliverable that it's okay then they already have verified deliverables ready to hand over to the customer or to the sponsor we need work performance data work performance data can include the degree of compliance with requirements number of non-conformities severity of non-conformities or the number of validation cycles performed in a period of time remember work performance data are raw values that are measured in the course of project execution all right let's take a look at the tools and techniques of validate scope there are just two tools and techniques of course the first one is inspection inspection includes activities such as measuring examining and validating to determine whether work and deliverables meet requirements and product acceptance criteria inspections are sometimes called reviews product reviews audits and walkthroughs another tool and technique used for validate scope is group decision making techniques do you remember we discussed group decision making techniques when we discussed collect requirements these techniques are used to reach conclusion with the validation when the validation is performed by the project team and other stakeholders remember some group decision making techniques we discuss we have the plurality we have the dictatorship and we have the majority and we also have unanimity all right let's now look at the outputs of validate scope one of the outputs is accepted deliverables deliverables that meet the acceptance criteria are formally signed off and approved by the customer or sponsor formal documentation received from the customer or sponsor acknowledging formal stakeholder acceptance of the project deliverables is forwarded to the closed project or phase process another output we have is change requests what if in the course of validate scope the customer doesn't accept the deliverable and he tells you i need so something corrected it didn't meet up my requirement and you have to make this correction what will you do as a project manager you have to raise a change request of course you raise a change request after you've evaluated the impact of the change being requested according to the pinball guide the completed deliverables that have not been formally accepted are documented along with the reason for non non acceptance of those deliverables those deliverables may require a change request for or defect repair the change requests are processed for review and disposition through the perform integrated change control process another output of the control of the validate scope is project document updates why do we need a project document update as an output or why does validate scope provide project document updates project documents that may be updated as a result of the validate scope process may include any documents that define the product or reports status on product completion verified project document may require approvals from the customer or sponsor in the form of signature or sign offs so this is where we come close to the end of this process validate scope a brief recap of what we've discussed take note of the inputs of validate scope project management plan requirement documentation requirements traceability matrix verified deliverables just a little quiz 
where do we get the del verified deliverables from? Or the verified deliverables is an output of which process? A simple control quality. Work performance data is also an input. Two tools and techniques, inspection and group decision making techniques, outputs, accepted deliverables, change requests, work performance information, and project document updates. This is where we wrap it up on the validate scope process. I hope you've learned something from this video. I want to thank you for viewing. I'd like you to join me in my next presentation where we move over to a brand new process and that is control scope. Control scope is my next presentation and try to check it out and is a follow up to this one. Once again, I'd like to thank you for viewing.